All right, here we go. East Riding Stages 2024. So, for a couple of days of really serious rain here on the island, but uh, it's looking pretty good now. And uh, the forecast looks all right this weekend up in Yorkshire. So looking forward to getting up there. It's a fair old drag, four and a half hours or so from uh, Southampton, but uh, I'm not gonna do that in one hit. I'll stop for lunch somewhere. So the rally is based in Beverly and Beverly is on the east coast of Yorkshire. Um, and the service park is at a place called Leckensfield, which is military base. Uh, and it's massive. So apparently there's plenty of room for service and everything like that. I know Daryl's been there and um, rallied a few times. I think he's won a few rallies there. So the site for service is an actual fact, um, quite a popular single venue rally as well. So the rally itself is quite a simple sort of a format insofar as there's uh, four stages, uh, if you don't count the spectator stage, but there's four main stages and they're quite long actually. So stages one and two, I think are around a sort of six, seven mile mark. Stage three is around three and a half, four miles. And then the fourth stage is quite a tricky stage. I think that's up near the sort of the five or six mark again. Um, and you go out and do the first four stages uh, straight away. So it's quite a long morning. You come back to service, got a 30 minute service. You come out of service and you go and do the spectator stage, which is a place called Westwood, I think it's called. And um, that is only about a mile or so long. And you do that twice. And then you go from there out to do the, the same four stages again. So you've only got one service, that's it. So you come out in the morning, get on, do the first leg, back to service, back out again, rally finished. So um, you haven't got a lot of time, you know, you've got to, I think you've got to be pretty careful with your tires and looking after the car and everything like that. So really just a question of taking a sort of a steady approach. I just want to finish the rally, if I'm honest. We've got a really good seeding at 21. Um, there's three cars missing between car one and car 21. So the actual fact means we've got a road position of 18. Um, so, with about 100, nearly 140 cars in the field, I think. So, big old, um, big old uh, entry. And the thing with these uh, road rallies, uh, closed road rallies, is they differ so much to single venue. The single venue is stage service, stage service, stage service, and I mean, really, you're doing the same sort of terrain all day long. So, um, you know, you kind of know the venue by the end of the day. With these uh, uh, closed road rallies, you know, it really is quite different. Um, you've got to be right on your A game and you've got to have a bloody good recce and a good co-driver to be doing the sort of speeds you're going to be doing at a single venue. Turning up to stages you don't know at all and expecting to be uh, lightning quick, unless you're very accustomed to pace notes, uh, then, you know, you've got to have to lower your expectations. Certainly, I'm not somebody that remembers stages very well. I've watched the video that they've sent out on the post note I've sent out and I've had a look round and it all looks pretty good. So far as sort of remembering those stages, apart from small sections, you know, you can forget it really. So the job will be done in the recce. So this is the part of living on the Isle of Wight, which isn't so great. Uh, normally you can just come down and get on any old ferry you like, uh, pretty much, you know, there's always space, but certain times it's just really, really busy and that was today, and I was booked on the nine o'clock ferry this morning. I, uh, I just literally missed the nine o'clock with the skin of my teeth. Um, I thought, well, that's right, I'll get the 10.30, only to be told that everything was fully booked and I wouldn't be getting on until the three o'clock this afternoon. And then, lo and behold, they put all the articles on last and there was just enough room for me to get on. So I've come up into uh, the Signature Lounge, which is this lovely first-class lounge, and I've had some pastries and some coffee, and I'm only an, hour, only an hour and a half behind schedule now. Right, well, it's Saturday morning. So I just have my breakfast now, and I'm going to get on the recce. It's about quarter to nine. Um, the co-drivers are going down to pick up all the passes and bits and pieces we need, which is available from nine o'clock. And then um, we can go out on the recce. So, yeah, sunny day. Looks uh, like it's going to be a nice weekend, I hope. So it should be dry. And we're going to get out and have a good look at the stages in a bit. So we've just done the first uh, loop of the recce and um, now we're going to go around and refine the notes on the second pass. Uh, there's quite a lot of detail in these uh, on the post note notes. Um, bits and pieces that probably, you know, at my level don't really need to be there and I'm not sure Jack's going to be able to get out in time. So this time when we go around, I think we'll be cutting out a few of the uh, 
sort of more minor details and just giving distances um, so that it doesn't get too much like information overload and obviously just with the emphasis on the dodgy bits so uh, yeah beautiful sunny day here I hardly see anyone else on the recce which is bizarre as usually you know you end up sort of following someone or getting someone behind you but it's almost like we're doing it all on our own but anyway um, yeah Skylarks are singing beautiful day and uh, we're going to get back to it now go back to the uh, start of stage one and do the four stages all the way through again So that's recce day complete. We've been out, done the second loop, refined the notes. Uh, there's going to be a lot of mud in places, uh, a lot of dry sections, but um, certain corners where there's a lot of standing water and a lot of mud. Um, but the time the first few cars have been through, uh, that's going to be dragged all over the place. So um, yeah, I think there's going to be some quick sections and some places where you're going to need to exercise a great deal of caution. But yeah, so looking forward to tomorrow, everything sorted. Uh, just need to have a meal, get our heads down, get a decent night's sleep and then get amongst it tomorrow. Here we are at the beginning of the rally. Um, we've got about 20 minutes or so, then we're gonna leave service, get out down to the town center. There's a sort of a uh, spectator kind of fan zone type thing going on down there. And then we're out on the stages. So um, icy, foggy, sun is trying to break through, look. But yeah, I reckon there could be a fair bit of fog about first thing and um, you can't discount some ice in places. So yeah, it's gonna be uh, an interesting start to the day. Right, here we are, Beverly Town Centre. As you can see, there's a fair throng of people. And all the cars are here. Very, very well attended. Yeah, really, really good. So, yeah, just getting ready to get on stage, uh, get on the road section. We've got about 10 minutes before we've got to leave. Um, control's just up here. This is Zach, a fan. Anyway, are you looking forward to the day, mate? I am. I yeah. am Richard. Yeah. Where looking forward. To um, hopefully on a good hairpin, I'd say. Yeah, good yeah. stuff, mate. Well, anyway, wicked. Right, nice one. Better well, get to it. Good luck today, Cheers, Richard. Mate. See you later, mate. through the first leg of stages so we've done four stages and we're just now queuing up to go into service so uh, we've ended up with Daryl behind us because we've uh, let this gentleman in front of us so he was kind of quite close to us at the end of one of the stages so he's popped in front um, it's really really tricky it's very very slippery the car's really nervous at high speed it's quite bumpy and the car's kind of sort of jittering around at high speed potentially putting like a wheel in the verge or something and it's a bit unnerving so um, not a lot of confidence in the car so hoping to make some changes in service and uh, get back out and just have a, just get round now um, so I don't think we're going to get any kind of a result we uh, must be quite a way back I reckon um, but we just want to get around get this car set up so um, we've got a bit more uh, understanding of how it works on these uh, closed roads So we've done the super special, uh, that's two runs around there. Um, we've obviously completed the first leg earlier, so we've got the second leg to do, which is a repeat of the morning, uh, four stages. We've made some setup changes to the car, so hopefully it's gonna go a little bit better now, and not feel so nervous uh, over the bumps and the high speed, which was uh, very disconcerting. So I think we're languishing well down the order, but um, I just wanna make sure we get around in one piece, and that um, we get some setup improvement in the car for this type of event. Uh, the single venue stuff is totally different and um, the setups are different so it might require a spring change but we won't be able to do that here but the guys have softened the car off so we'll see how it goes on the next run get back to it
we made it to the end of the rally. And we're just queuing up to go into uh, the square for like a regroup at the end of the uh, event. Thanks for marshalling. This is just what rallying needs to be taken into the town centres for all the public to see. Uh, this is the future. This is how we're going to engage with people and keep rally sustainable, I think, as far as I'm concerned, it's the only way forward. Just like Belgium, we've been doing it for years and years. Tuesday morning and um, I'm just uh, off to the mainland again for work so uh, I'm never off these wretched ferries but uh, on a sunny day like this not too bad anyway um, yeah it was a bit of a struggle this weekend um, so I've spoken to Neil Buckley we're gonna make some changes to the car we're gonna put softer springs on it and just work on getting a uh, chassis set up that uh, works for me on the uh, sort of bumpy closed roads yeah the other thing is, is that the uh, the tires weren't really fantastic um, I couldn't really get them to work they're quite old those D-Max they work all right at single venues and they're cheap which is good because I'm on a budget but um, yeah, I think for like, you know, the close roads environments, uh, I'm just gonna have to get some part of Michelin's uh, that just, you know, they, they, they turn on straight away. Didn't have a huge amount of confidence in the tires. I think, you know, with the chassis set up being compromised, that was also a bit of a problem because uh, if you can't get into the uh, stage properly, then you're not gonna turn the tires on. So what with all the nervousness of the car and not being able to get the car settled and uh, get confidence in the stage, it's a bit of a vicious circle really because then, you know, if you can't get the tyres to turn on, um, you know, you're fighting against it all the time. But it must be said, the uh, actual rally itself was wonderfully run. Um, I just felt so relaxed all day. There was never any drama with tight road sections. Um, it was slick. Yeah, really well run. Uh, I've got to take my hats off to the organising team. Um, and you know the fact that it's based in the uh, historic market town of Beverly um, it really adds to the atmosphere and the number of people out was um, fantastic it was so good to see you know for me it was very much like Belgium uh, you know really the uh, the locals getting engaged and had that kind of like sort of almost like festivaly sort of atmosphere of of, of an occasion which I think is uh, lacking at a lot of other yeah. rallies that you go to obviously the single venues a lot was on MOD land um, the only thing I would say and uh, you're never going to get around it in that particular rally and, and location is uh, it's always nice if you can get the service area accessible to the public but you know with it being a, a MOD land at Leckensfield which is I might add the perfect place to have the service park um, you know you can't let the, uh, the they won't let the public in there uh, the stages themselves are really good you know all of those stages were excellent you know provided a good challenge fast flowing um, tricky sections uh, yeah there was nothing I didn't like about it so massive shout to Jack Morris as well I mean he stepped up perfectly um, you wouldn't have known he hadn't been in an R5 car uh, you know um, he was quite quiet when I first met him which is understandable you know he's a young bloke and um, you know he's stepping up out of uh, sort of more club and cars into something a bit more serious um, but no, uh, we went out, did the recce, um, he was, yeah, great, no problem at all. When we got into the event itself, you know, uh, about the pre-event, he was very, very organised, everything was done, I didn't have to think about any organisation or anything like that. He told me where I had to be, at what time, everything like that. And when we actually got into the event, um, you know, he was right on it. Um, he just uh, just turned it on, very professional, calm, collected. Uh, the delivery of the notes was fantastic. I mean, he never really had to get up to speed. He was just, he was right there with it um, instantly. 
I did make quite an effort to get some onboard footage of the uh, rally, but uh, my camera uh, had to go back for repairs, and um, when I had it back, uh, the settings seemed to have been changed. Uh, nobody's fault, I guess, I don't know, had it apart, so it's reset to like a default setting. But um, it's uh, all the screen, the windscreen was just white constantly, so you couldn't actually see anything of the road, so that was a bit of a waste of time, so sorry about that. I know you guys like a bit of onboard footage, but um, I'll uh, get the settings sorted out for next time. Meanwhile, if there's anyone out there that fancies sponsoring a rally car, ha ha, um, yeah, send uh, answers on a postcard to uh, wishful thinking at Benbridge PO355 UE. Um, yeah, I don't think that's very likely. Massive thanks to uh, Neil Buckley at Don Buckley Motorsport and all the lads that looked after the car over the weekend. And um, thanks to you guys, the viewers who watch this. Um, I do this for myself as much as anything, but um, the fact that you guys like it um, encourages me to keep making it. So uh, I know I said I was gonna um, stop doing it, but uh, since I've had such a uh, overwhelming response to keep going and people coming up to me at the rally and saying uh, they watch the channel, you know, I find it incredible um, that people recognize me. <laughs> And, um, and come up and thank me for producing the content. In the meantime, please like and subscribe and I'll keep doing it. Bye for now.